Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today for this uh, announcement of the partnership between the City of Seattle and Curative for more COVID testing. I want to do a quick reminder at the top of the uh, meeting here, if you would like to ask a question to please email me at the email address in the press release or in the advisory that went out today. And as a note, we will be ending right at 2.30 so that we can all join the governor for his press conference. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mayor Jenny Durkin. Thank you very much, Anthony. And thank you everyone for being here today as we announce a new partnership for testing with Curative. And this testing will provide more options at no cost in our Seattle neighborhoods, particularly those neighborhoods who have don't direct access to testing. On January 21, the first case of COVID-19 was announced in our country, right here in our region. And due to an inept response by the federal government, almost it has been 10 months since the onset. And now we are in the midst of the worst wave yet. More than 1 million Americans are infected. More than 250,000 people have lost their lives, impacting millions across the country. Seattle led the nation on COVID-19 response with our nationally recognized testing pilots, one of the first in the nation eviction moratoriums, millions in rent relief, food assistance, and other programs. These policies led Seattle to have the lowest case count and hospitalization rates of the 30 American largest cities. But we all know that COVID-19 is now surging across the entire country, our state, our county, and yes, in our city. We are not immune. On Sunday, we learned from Governor Inslee that almost 20,000 cases have been identified since the beginning of November. 20,000 cases since the beginning of November. Uh, Director Patty Hayes will identify for you and provide you some more data that demonstrates what a dangerous time we are in right now. Our city and nation have suffered needless deaths because of the fumbled handling of the virus at the beginning of this. We know the best defense to this virus are the actions we take ourselves. And I wanna urge all Seattleites to please continue to protect those you love. The city of Seattle has always been an innovative leader, stepping up to provide equipment needed to do broad scale testing for our residents. In June, we launched our first two testing sites. And since that time, we have administered more than 375,000 tests with capacity to test 5,500 people a day. And today we're able to add more capacity. We know testing is one of the critical things we need to have in place to fight this virus. Today we're announcing a partnership and a pilot. I am so grateful to announce that I've signed a memorandum of understanding with Curative to pilot two free, and I wanna say again free, testing kiosks one in Northeast Seattle and one in Central Seattle to provide for safer and healthier communities. Each kiosk will have the capacity to provide more than 500 tests a day. In the coming weeks, we plan to have sites in several more locations on city properties across Seattle neighborhoods. We wanna make testing as easy as possible for the residents of Seattle. These kiosks will be placed in our denser neighborhoods where infrastructure can accommodate the drive up testing. We will focus also on our underserved areas where we are seeing an increase, a disproportionate impact of COVID related cases and the economic impacts of the COVID crisis. Our first two kiosks will be on site and ready to administer tests in early December and we'll have additional kiosks in mid December. We expect that by mid-December, we will have added at least the capacity for 3,500 additional daily tests. Added to the city capacity, we will then be able to have 9,000 tests a day capacity. As with all citywide testing, clients will not be charged. Again, they will not be charged and will not receive a bill for testing. The testing will be responsive to demand and the sites may flex a little bit, but preliminarily we anticipate they will be open during the week. And we think those at the hours will be Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. initially. Uh, depending on demand, those times may flex and may alter by different kiosks. We will continue to request that clients register online. So you can register in the same place at seattle.gov and if you register in advance, it will make it quicker for you and easier for everybody. 
While we're on the break of COVID-19 vaccines, we, we hope to be able to see progress on that front. It has been truly um, one of the fastest developments of a vaccine ever. Um, but we need to continue testing. And we want to say, if you have any symptoms at all of COVID, or if you've been confirmed contact with someone with COVID that you think you've been exposed and might have it, please get tested. Get tested as quickly as you can. Uh, we have the holiday season coming on um, quickly, both Thanksgiving and Christmas. And the hard truth is it's going to be unlike any holiday we've had in our times. We have asked people to separate from their friends and family and to not come together. This has been one of the hardest parts about COVID is the isolation people have been experiencing, the inability to spend time with the people they know and love, but it is so critical this holiday season for people not to join with their families. We did it before. Everyone took the hard steps this last spring to drive down the virus and flatten the curve. And we showed that we can do it. And while we have more testing capacity now to assist us in this, it also is true still that our own actions are the best defense wearing a mask, washing our hands, keeping the physical distance, and for this holiday season, not gathering together. I will tell you that my family, I come from a big family, eight kids, and on the holidays, we traditionally get together. Last year, I cooked for over 25 people. This year, it'll be three people. It is hard not to see the people that you love, but that's the way to keep them safe. You wanna do everything you can not to get this virus and to make sure the people you love don't get this virus. Uh, next, you're gonna hear from Miranda Gottlieb, the Vice President of Marketing at Curative, who will share more about this new testing approach and resources. I'm so incredibly grateful that we're able to have yet another ex um, expansion of our testing capability. Before I hand it over, I really, again, wanna thank Seattle businesses and residents who have done so much during this year to fight COVID and to help each other. And I know that these last series of restrictions that the governor has ordered have been a devastating blow to many small businesses and workers, particularly in the restaurant industry. We will be working all we can to help you directly and are continuing to work with the state to help you too. I know that makes the holiday season even tougher to either not know the fate of your own business or to suddenly lose your job. I also wanna thank the people at King County Public Health, Patty Hayes and Jeff Duchin and their whole team who have worked tirelessly since the beginning of this year to fight this. And I, of course, want to thank my own fire chief and his uh, and Brian, who you're going to hear from today, who have been su such leaders, not just here in this region, but across the country and in being innovative about how to set up uh, highly professional, very effective, very easy for people to use testing facilities. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Miranda. Miranda, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Durkin. I want to start off by just saying thank you for your leadership. Um, thank you to all of you for all of your hard work uh, during this pandemic. It's really an honor and a pleasure for Curative to be able to partner with you all to expand access to testing, to COVID-19 testing in Seattle and, and the community. Curative started in early 2020 when we were actually developing a test for sepsis. And upon realizing that we needed expanded access to testing for COVID-19, we quickly pivoted. And in March, we started testing broadly uh, for COVID-19 through our self-collected oral fluid swab. It's a simple to use swab um, that can be scalable. Um, we have now completed over 7 million tests across 8,000 test sites in the United States. We deployed our kiosk, our uh, COVID-19 testing kiosk earlier this summer, and we have since rolled out over 100 mobile testing units across the United States, testing over 500 people a day at each of these sites, um, and also providing infrastructure to be able to test thousands of people through uh, our drive-throughs, our walk-ups, and other types of testing modalities. It's through this test that individuals are able to cough three times, to swab their mouth, and to uh, collect the sample without close contact to a healthcare worker which really matters as we're trying to limit the amount of PPE that's necessary when we have shortages, and also to ensure that we can test the most number of people that need it as we are seeing the increase in the number of cases um, and to keep people as safe as, as possible. Um, we used the kiosk model to ensure that we could provide access to testing in the communities that need it most. 
Not everybody has a car and not every community can facilitate a large scale drive through or a walk up um, site that you uses a large amount of space. So through this kiosk, people can register online for an appointment, show up and um, go through the, the testing process without coming into contact with a healthcare worker and with distance between um, other uh, folks who are testing in the community. Um, we send results within 24 to 48 hours to everyone by uh, SMS, text, and email. And um, we're so excited to be able to, to come to Seattle uh, to be able to expand access to, to thousands more tests per day. And we think uh, it will be a really great opportunity for people who haven't had a test or who have regular um, uh, concerns about uh, being exposed to COVID-19 to be able to, to get a test when they need a test. Um, the last thing I'll say is that you know, Curative is here to transform the way that we interact with healthcare. We are here to bring access to testing, reliable testing, accurate testing, and we know that we can provide a really great service through this accessible model of healthcare. Um, right now, we're working on uh, responding to the pandemic, helping communities like yours get access to testing, and we want to be a partner um, in, in helping uh, throughout this pandemic and how we can bring a closer healthcare service to the communities who need it. Uh, pending any questions, um, I'll pass it on uh, to uh, the next folks on the list. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief of the Seattle Fire Department. The number of tests conducted per day at our city's testing sites has doubled from the summer months with the holiday rush and the spread of COVID-19 in our region. Today, we're excited about the announcement of implementing mobile kiosk in our city, as it will help support the highest density areas of the city with additional testing and serve as a complement to our current community testing sites. We want to thank Miranda and Curative for their innovation of mobile kiosks and for expanding this service to our great city. As public health continues to message, we all need to avoid travel around the holiday season and only gather with members of our own households. This is not the time for large holiday gatherings. It is not worth it to unintentionally pass this disease on to others in your family. I wanna introduce Acting Captain Brian Wallace, who is in charge of our four community testing sites to talk more about the surge in testing that we're seeing at our sites and how the public can help us ensure who needs testing and how they can receive it. Captain Wallace. Thank you, Chief. Uh, as Chief Scoggins said, when we originally envisioned, we were planning to test about 2,400 people a day across three sites. We've expanded to four sites. And, and as recently as two weeks ago, we were testing somewhere around 4,000 people a day. Yesterday, we almost, almost tested 6,000 people. So we are doing everything we can to improve our efficiency and make these sites as accessible to urge right now of people trying to get tested. And I would like to reiterate what Mayor Durkin said, you shouldn't be using these tests to get together to have a holiday celebration this year. That is not the face of the pandemic. We're in. We need to prioritize. How about um, I, I bring it back and wrap that up, if that's okay. That'd be great, Chief. With Thanksgiving just around the corner, I wanna reflect on the incredible work of our members and the community. Captain Brian Wallace and Sarah Smith and all of our testing site staff, they have really been working around the clock to provide a critical testing service during this time of great need. Firefighters and paramedics continue to respond to COVID patients in the field and are taking all the precautions necessary to provide top level service. Seattle Fire and Medic One are seeing twice as many people sick with COVID in the last two weeks compared to October. We're staying committed to our values of serving you, our community during this challenging time. Remember that the future is bright and we'll one day again be able to gather with our loved ones Thank you for your resilience. 
we'll get through this together. Lastly, I wanna thank our mayor, Mayor Durkin and Director Hayes and Dr. Duchin for their continued leadership during this pandemic. Testing in our community would not be possible without their support and resources. We look forward to seeing the added capacity from the implementation of these mobile kiosks. Next, you'll hear from Director Patty Hayes. Thank you so much, Chief Scoggins. And I'm so sorry we didn't hear all of Captain Wallace's uh, points. I'll try and reiterate one of them that he was trying to say there. But I wanna thank you uh, and the mayor and the city for their partnership and the commitment to accessible COVID-19 testing for all people in Seattle and also all the work that you've been doing, Mayor, in this uh, for the, to address this pandemic. Uh, we are leaders because of it and I am eternally grateful. This new collaboration with Curative to further expand COVID-19 testing is so important right now. It's important to meet the rapidly growing demands because as you've heard, our outbreak has been exponentially growing. We have record number of COVID-19 cases in King County. And just as the chief said, the fact that we are seeing uh, so many more when our re first responders go, we're seeing more in the hospital and we're averaging around 500 cases a day now, which is far higher than any other point in the outbreak. And as I said, COVID related hospitalizations are increasing. We're now seeing the highest rate uh, since last spring. This week, about 180 people are now hospitalized for COVID in King County. This is putting an enormous strain on our healthcare system, including the healthcare providers we rely on for critical care. It also puts at risk for other folks of not being able to access care for people who are sick or needing help. For example, we don't want our healthcare system to be overwhelmed so that someone having a heart attack or needing cancer treatment can't get care. This is why we're so concentrating now on these partnerships and why I'm so grateful for the city's just quick response to set this up with Curative and for Curative's quick response to work with us. That's why the governor's temporary actions uh, also last weekend, while painful, they're so important right now, we have to turn the tide on the upsurge of cases, get more under control. And we have the ability to do that with everyone's help, as the mayor said, we really know the numbers can drop in the next few weeks. As she said, and as she has modeled by changing her Thanksgiving plans, as I have changed mine, please avoid the indoor gatherings, keep masks, keep that physical distancing. It makes such a difference. And I know how hard it's been to get through this, but we can see the new horizon. As we've said, the news on the vaccine development is very promising. It'll be here. We need to get through the next few months. We all know it's gonna be a tough winter, but we can all come together. That's why accessible testing is fundamental to our response. Once people know they're ill, they can make sure they don't infect more people and they can take steps to take the best care for themselves. Testing demand, as you heard, all over King County skyrocketed, reflecting the path of this outbreak. So over the last few months, our staff and partners have been working so hard to create and expand this so that the city of Seattle's great work and with other partners, we've expanded testing and we can do it now again with this great partnership with Curative. As Captain Wallace was saying, and I wanna reiterate, these tests are for people that are symptomatic or have felt like they've been exposed. We want to prioritize testing for that. So please remember that. This is not a testing site to make it okay to go be in a gathering. You need to know that it's layering all of these measures, the masking, the, the physical distancing, the limiting of, of individuals getting together that is an essential part of this fight. So in addition, we're talking to Curative about possibilities for partnership outside the city of Seattle, and I'm excited for that. Access to equitable 
access to testing is essential. Together, we will continue to monitor testing demands, explore these options, get it where it's needed. Now I'll turn it back to Anthony so he can take your question. Thank you very much, Director Hayes. Um, we have one question lined up right now. As a reminder to everyone, if you would like to ask a question, please use the hand raise feature and we will read you in. Our first question today will come from Bobby Stills, Converge Media. Bobby, floor is yours. Bobby, go ahead. Hey, Bobby, if you're talking, you're muted. Okay, um, fortunately, um, questions were sent in from Amari from Converge Media before this, so I will go ahead and read those for you. Um, Bobby, hopefully these are the questions you wanted to ask. Uh, the question, first question is, how many additional kiosks will be added, where and when? Sure, I'll take that one, um, if that's okay, Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, the, the first two should be added, as the mayor said, in the uh, first, first weeks of December. And then behind that, there will be an additional, um, at least five behind that. So the first, second week of December is when we hope to get these online. Thank you, Chief. And the second question, um, Mayor, you mentioned that there are 550 or 5,500 tests per day. How does our city compare with other cities in the availability of tests per day? I don't know in pure numbers, but we're doing very well in the amount of testing and we we're the we have more tests than any city in the state. We now account for almost 15% of the statewide testing. And our testing is one of the reasons why as a city, we are the lowest in, in the top largest cities in terms of disease spread and hospitalizations. Now, obviously we're seeing a surge here, so we're concerned about it. Um, also related to that, today I also signed an executive order that will bring together all of our departments to see what we can do with new strategies um, to, to expand testing even more. And that will include collaborations and partnerships with new testing laboratories and other operational entities. Um, identifying five to 10 additional locations um, for testing facilities across the city. Any new strategies identified will also include considerations to make sure, for example, that we're very focused on what we're seeing on the health disparities and getting testing in those places where we know the communities have been disproportionately impacted, particularly our communities of color. The importance of maintaining high standards in these testing, so we're very particular about which kinds of tests and how they're uh, done. The importance of maintaining quick results, because if you don't get quick results, you can't take the steps you need to take to keep those people around you safe. And the importance of maintaining data so that our data can flow to King County and public health so that they can continue to, to see what, what is happening with the virus regionally, because that has to be part of a strategy both for contact tracing and for combating this virus. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, and I believe our last question, will come from Elise Takahama, Seattle Times. Elise, the floor is yours. Hi there, thank you guys so much. Um, I um, I believe this is for either Mayor Durgan or Chief Goggins. Um, I know you guys mentioned that the two first, the first two kiosks are gonna be somewhere in North Seattle and Central Seattle. Do you have anything more specific about specific neighborhoods? Um, and then also, are those gonna be stationed in one spot or, or moving around? I'm going to let the chief take the first crack at that. Sure, we're still working to identify the exact locations in North North Seattle, maybe around North Gate or Lake City area. And then for the second one down in the central area, the central district or Capitol Hill neighborhoods. So that's what we're targeting right now. Um, and basically they are mobile. I mean, if you can imagine those home pods when people go to move, they're like eight by eight containers. It'll be similar to that, what's out in the community in these testing kiosks. So we will be able to uh, relocate them to other locations as we need. So they are mobile in a sense, but we are trying to tackle the areas that need the testing. One thing I'd add, if I may, is that what we've found testing across the US is that by placing these kiosks, although they can be moved and that's a really 
fantastic feature of them. When, when we're able to put testing in a community to create the public health communication and awareness for communities, um, that's where we find real success is by establishing presence um, and connecting with communities to build trust and, and to establish um, that, that partnership in communities with local businesses um, and leaders. Um, and so that's a really important part of the kiosk is that it's part of the community for some length of time. Although depending on um, you know, what the strategy is from, from the city leadership um, you know, and public health, certainly those, those units can be moved as necessary. Thank you very much. Um, and seeing no more hands and no more questions, Mayor, I'm handing it back to you if you have any closing thoughts for us. Thank all of the teams that made this work possible, but emphasize to everybody, we want to make this as easy as possible. And once you get tested, if you find you're positive, you have to change your behavior to stay home, to isolate, to get the care you need. Um, if you have symptoms or you think you've been exposed to anyone, please get tested as quickly as you can. We're finding so much of this disease spreads by people who don't even know they're sick. So getting people who have the symptoms tested is so important. I also want to emphasize, have, be safe. Keep the people you love safe as well as yourself. So wear a mask, wash your hands, keep that physical distance. And going into the holidays, know the greatest gift you can give to the people you love is to change your behavior and not to gather, not to take the chance of exposing each other. I know this has been a really hard time for people. And again, I want to say to all the people of Seattle, thank you for all you've done and all you worked through this year, because it has been an incredibly difficult year. We will be working with our small businesses and our workers who, with the governor's new restrictions, are yet again seeing economic impacts um, and we're talking to the governor who will be announcing stuff later today. So I'm gonna let everyone get to that press conference. Everyone stay safe. Thank you very much. Take care.